Hey guys, welcome to the shack and Merry Christmas. I hope you guys are having a wonderful holiday season and as a present from me to you, I have a special Christmas themed video for you guys. Because I thought, what says Merry Christmas better than a powdered black semiconducting metalloid, or in other words, elemental silicon. Um, yeah, that's kinda not what happened at all. Uh, over the past few days I've been trying to think of a cool holiday-themed experiment to uh, do for you guys, and I tried several things, but all of them turned out to be really, really crappy ideas. So I decided to just edit some footage that I had shot a couple months ago from my silicon synthesis. Anyway, I hope you guys still enjoy. Hey guys, and welcome to the shack. In a future video, I plan to synthesize silicon tetrachloride. However, to do that, I will need elemental silicon. So in this video, I will be using a modified version of Nile Red's magnesium silicide synthesis to do so. In his video, Nile Red synthesizes magnesium silicide by heating together silicon dioxide, or sand, and magnesium metal in a test tube. The first reaction that occurs is that the magnesium combusts to form magnesium oxide, and in doing so it strips off the oxygen from the silicon atoms to make elemental silicon. The silicon then reacts with the excess hot magnesium to make magnesium silicide. In his procedure, an excess of magnesium was used to ensure that all of the silicon got converted to magnesium silicide. I figured that by instead using an excess of silicon dioxide, we could prevent the silicon form from reacting with excess magnesium. Thus, we should theoretically be left with some silicon in the products. After going through all of the stoichiometry, I determined that in order to synthesize 10.00 grams of silicon tetrachloride, I would need 1.653 grams of silicon. To synthesize the silicon, I would need 2.861 grams of magnesium and 3.536 grams of silicon dioxide or sand. However, I decided to do a double batch because I was expecting low yields. This brings the mass up to 5.722 grams of magnesium and 7.072 grams of silicon dioxide. I have then added a 20% stoichiometric excess of the silicon dioxide, and this comes out to a total of 8.486 grams of sand needed. When I weighed out the chemicals, you can see that I used a little too much magnesium, but I just redid the stoichiometry and found that I would need 9.53 grams of silicon dioxide to maintain the 20% excess. Once I had measured everything out, the chemicals were added to a beaker and mixed using a glass stir rod. Once the powders were mixed, I transferred them to a crucible. I didn't want to use a test tube because I can't afford to break one, but this crucible will easily be able to withstand the heat produced in the reaction. Alright, so I'm going to stick a magnesium ribbon in this thing and see if it ignites. So yeah, it appears to be working pretty well until the magnesium ribbon stops burning. Um, so yeah, at this point, we I thought it was just going to stop and do nothing, um, and I looked at it, um, I got close and looked at it, and um, there were some small uh, specks in there that were burning, um, and then with some agitation, um, it all started burning again. And after a few more seconds, it uh, fired back up, and uh, the whole mixture started burning. And um, yeah, you can see that the heat uh, produced actually was enough to crack the crucible. Um, so I, uh, I may have been misguided in my uh, statement before. This crucible will easily be able to withstand the heat produced in the reaction. Yeah, well, I wouldn't necessarily call this withstanding the heat per se. Uh, maybe we can say the crucible coped with the heat? Anyway, here's a time-lapse shot of the mixture cooling. Once the products were cool enough to touch, I took the main clump and added it to a beaker and crushed it up. 
So at this point, we have a mixture of unreactive magnesium and silicon dioxide, as well as the products of the main reaction and side reaction, which are magnesium oxide, magnesium silicide, and hopefully some silicon. To remove the magnesium and magnesium oxide impurities, I will simply add water to the mixture. Both of these dissolve in water. Next, I need to remove the magnesium silicide impurity, as well as any magnesium that didn't dissolve in the water. I will do this by adding hydrochloric acid to the mixture. You must be careful when you do this because silane gas might be produced, and this gas is pyrophoric, meaning it spontaneously ignites in air. Anyway, as you can see, no silane was produced here, which is either a really good sign and means that none of the silicon produced reacted with excess magnesium, so our yield will be higher. Or this could also be a bad sign, which is more likely, and it could mean that this reaction didn't work at all and that the magnesium just burned. However, on the bottom of the beaker is a dark black insoluble powder, which is a pretty good indication that we have actual silicon. I let the products bathe in hydrochloric acid overnight. The next morning, I decanted the solution and vacuum filtered the solid products. I then washed the solids several times with distilled water. I only show one washing here, but in total I performed three washes. I then transferred the filter paper and remaining wet solids onto a watch glass to dry overnight. After letting the solids dry, I transferred them to a vial. It was at this point that I realized that I had forgotten to weigh the product and determine percent yield. So I first weighed a crucible and recorded its mass as 28.23 grams. I then scraped the damp solids into the crucible and used a wash bottle to rinse out the remaining silicon. I then heated it over a Bunsen burner until the solids were completely dry. I then placed the crucible on a heat resistant pad to cool it down. Once it had cooled to room temperature, I reweighed it and recorded the mass as 32.05 grams. The mass of the product is the second mass minus the first one, which comes out to 3.82 grams. The theoretical yield of silicon based on magnesium is only 3.71 grams, so the 3.82 grams here represents a 103% yield. Now this tells me that the product is extremely impure. Given that I used impure sand, and that not all of the mixture reacted, and also that I lost some product by it adhering to the filter paper and Buchner funnel, I highly doubt that I achieved anywhere near a 50% yield. Obviously, not all of these 3.82 grams are actually silicon. It is obvious that it is impure because of the over 100% yield, and also, there are a bunch of white flakes mixed in with the black powder. This is most likely unreacted sand. Now, I'm not worried about removing the sand, because it shouldn't affect the synthesis of silicon tetrachloride. Also, I am unaware of any way to separate silicon from silicon dioxide. If any of you guys know of a way to do so, please tell me in the comments. In a future video, I will be testing this silicon using sodium hydroxide. Also, for the past month or so, I have been working on a few projects involving the separation of the metals that make up some US coins, so make sure to stay tuned for those videos as well. But until then, thanks for watching, and I wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Oh, and of course, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out my channel for other interesting chemistry videos, and tell your friends to do the same thing.